Hi everyone, welcome to the Publishing the Action Guide Supplemental Lessons. These lessons are designed to help accompany your guide and make sure that you get the most usage out of it. My name's Tracy Garner. I had a wonderful time coming up with these lessons and the Publishing Action Guide to help guide you on your journey towards publishing your book. I'm so excited and I'm glad that you're here. Let's get started with Module 1. You can ask questions at any time and let me know how you're doing, as well as things that you're learning along the way. I look forward to it. First, let's talk about preparing for the course. A couple of things I'd like you to think about and try to do is, when you're participating in this course, always try to fully engage and be focused. Find a quiet space, take notes, and of course, you're gonna need your publishing action guide. Hopefully you have that with you. And each time you listen to one of these modules, you should be using your guide along with them. You can get the guide two ways, either through a digital download, you may have purchased it at one of my conferences, have the digital version. If you don't have the publishing action guide, you can do this course without it, but I really recommend you wait until you have it. This first segment is about gaining clarity. And I really want to understand, and really for you to understand, why do you want to publish this book? And why do you want to pursue writing at all if you're hoping to produce more than one book? What's your motivation? What do you want to do? How do you want it? When do you want to do it? Do you want a publishing contract? Or do you want to self-publish or indie publish? Do you have other entrepreneurial pursuits that you've gone after and made work? What will success look like to you? And what do you still need to learn about the publishing process in order to be successful? Answer these questions in the Gaining Clarity section of the Publishing Action Guide and really think about them. You may be surprised with what you come up with. Now that you're thinking about all the reasons why you want to publish and tell your story, I really want you to look at this chart and ask yourself if all of these things line up. When you think about writing and thinking about publishing, are you excited? Do you have passion? Do you have the skills and the knowledge and even a little bit of expertise? Whatever subject you're going to be writing about, you should have skills, knowledge, and expertise. And do you feel purposeful when you're writing? Do you feel like you have a real purpose and a real message to share with others? Do you have talent, heart, God-given ability? Sometimes people will tell you, this is written beautifully, or you should publish this. These are just some of the reasons to keep going. Reasons you should reevaluate if they come about are because she or he did it. You don't want to do something just because someone else did it. My mom and dad always thought I should do it. That's not a good reason. What do you think? So-and-so died with a dream inside and I don't want that to happen to me. These can be good motivations when channeled in the right way, but you shouldn't be doing something just because of those reasons. It should be a deep yearning in your heart and your mind to want to put something together and tell a certain story to uplift and encourage others or to talk about your lessons learned and things that you should avoid. Next, in uncovering your why, you should think about the myths and erroneous assumptions that you have about publishing books. Some people think it's a glamorous job and there are parts that are fun and glamorous and fashionable and being an author and going to bookstores, but there's a lot of it that's real work. You don't always make back what you put into it. There'll be bad reviews that people will leave. These things could deter you and hurt your feelings. Are you willing to keep going in spite of that? If you really know that this is your passion and this is in your purpose, those things that come about, any things that you once thought are not true, they won't deter you. So really think about that. There's a lot of rejection in writing 
and putting your heart on paper and letting all the world see it. There are some tough realities that come about with that. And you have to decide if you're going to move through that and move past it and keep going. Will one little rejection or a bad review stop you in your tracks? So it's going to be important to think about those things. The next thing is to ask yourself, what myths and erroneous assumptions do I have about publishing? Do I think it's all glamorous all the time? Do you forget about the isolation and the loneliness sometimes that comes when it's just you and your words? You'll want to maybe find a group or a writing group or there are writing sessions sometimes at places like Wegmans and the library and coffee shops. And you'll have to remember that you need to continue to get out and see what's going on with the world and make sure that you omit a chance for isolation and feelings of depression, things that can bring you down and really limit and impact your ability to write on a regular basis. In your workbook, I have covered some of the things that you need to think about with getting a traditional contract that is the path A that we went over. It's listed more in more detail throughout the publishing action guide, so you'll want to refer to that. But here are a list of things that I think are the good, the bad, and the ugly about each one. The good of a traditional contract or getting a book deal is that they pay you in advance. There really is little upfront cost that you'll need to pay out of pocket. Yes, they have greater distribution. You can reach bookstores that you don't travel to or that you don't live near because books will automatically be sent to the bookstores throughout the area. The problem with that is the bookstores are dwindling. A lot of them have closed where there used to be probably 10,000 bookstores across the United States has dwindled to probably 3,000 to 2,500 bookstores. So many bookstores have closed, so you have to ask yourself, is that really worth it? There are department experts at the publishing house when you get a traditional contract and a book deal, and they will help you because they've done other books and they understand everything that needs to go into making your book the best it can be so that they can sell. Some of the bad things, and you have to gauge for yourself whether you think these are really bad, Uh, hence the ugly category. The bad is that the advances are getting smaller and smaller. If you're able to write a lot of books and keep putting them out, that will give you more money, and that's important. You may have a lot of rejection before you actually get a book deal, and you'll have to ask yourself, are you able to withstand that? And sometimes you'll send out books, you'll send out query letters, and nobody will ever contact you at all. They may have very well not looked at the book yet and so you're just waiting you really have no recourse to find out what's going on with your product or your submission is that there's no feedback like i mentioned you'll get a letter that says sorry this is not really what we're looking for but thank you in that letter there's no way you can tell well was it good is it just not right for you are you not buying that right now did you was the opening bad but the rest of the book is salvageable you'll have no real feedback on what you submit, and that can be frustrating because how can you improve? Editors have left, they go on maternity leave, which is a natural part of the process, but sometimes they don't come back. You would hope that people would come back to go on maternity leave, but they just never return, and that actually has happened to me. And then the ultimate thing that's really ugly is when the entire line and the imprint closes completely. Sometimes that imprint is not doing well or And you really have no way of knowing that. You don't know what's going on at the big companies. There'll be some, sometimes some writing on the wall, but that won't come down to you, usually until you're close to sealing the deal or have a couple books in and they're publishing and you think they're doing fine. And some of the authors may be doing really well. It's just that the line can't sustain for whatever reason. Some of those reasons have nothing to do with the actual authors. The other path that we talked about is going indie or self-publishing. The good is, and I think this is a really good thing, your book is out there really forever. Once you write and publish a book, it's out there, it's in the market. Your book could also see a revival. Let's say there's two or three years between your books. 
if you wrote a second book and there's two or three years between the second book and the first book, people will start to look and say, wow, this was really good. Have you written anything else? And then they'll go back and revive book two or book one. There's a sense of pride and accomplishment when you look at your books and see what's available. There is nothing like wearing all of the hats, book cover design, formatting, editing your book. Not that you have to wear those hats, but that you have sought the people and the experts to make your book better. Put it all in, spend all of the time, and then produce the book yourself, uploading it to the different platforms and releasing it to the world and to the masses to be consumed. There is such a prideful thing that comes about of toiling and laboring to get this done and to have you a launch date while you're, or a launch party event where you're going to release your book. With that, there's no restrictions on where and how you can promote. Sometimes certain book publishing companies, depending on what you write, will say, well, we don't really go to that conference or really, we don't really go to that place. Uh, we stick over here and we do these kinds of events and we do these kinds of things. It may be a very lucrative thing for you, but you never know what the impetus or the reason is behind not being able to participate in something. So there will be some restrictions. I don't think there are many restrictions, but even just one can cost you time, effort, and frustration not really knowing what that is. The other good thing about self-publishing is that there are no deadlines. You impose the deadlines. And sometimes that can get a bad rap by others looking from the outside. They assume that you don't make any deadlines and that you don't push yourself to meet a date that you set. But you can set your own deadlines. But the beauty is that you don't, you can move them accordingly because of family issues, you may be ill, or other things that can cause setbacks. These are real things. And sometimes with a publishing house, their deadline is a hard and fast rule. They have a book coming out and that can be great. It can be a good motivator, but for some people it can be a headache and it can leave people feeling frustrated and can also kill creativity. The bad thing about self-publishing is sometimes you'll hire the wrong freelancers if you don't vet them, if you don't research about them, and sometimes even when you do. Those people may not respond. They may do one book cover and you'd like another book cover that looks similar to the first one to kind of create a brand for yourself and similar covers. And then that person is gone. They'll leave and you'll be kind of in a lurch and you may have to start over again. You also don't have much recourse to get back the money, any deposits or even the full amount that you paid for that person to work on your book on aspects of your book. Sometimes you'll get bad reviews because the editing has not been great or it's poor editing and there are things that you miss and other people scrutinize this and they think that it's not a good look. And the same can go in the reverse in that a lot of self-publishers are working really hard on editing, but then there are always a group of people that put out a book very fast because they can and then it's full of full of issues and errors and that makes all of us self-publishers look bad. The ugly is that your book really goes nowhere. You lose money, you lose time, you lose effort, and you don't market it properly, you don't know how to market it properly, you run out of funds to hire someone to help you to market it properly, and so you lose money in your investment. There's no return. You make the wrong choices, that's the same as the bad, or you hire the wrong people, you lose all of your savings. Hopefully you won't put all your savings into your book, but you'll save for it and kind of pay as you go. And that's a beauty of self-publishing. And then you just make poor, poor decisions based on bad advice. All of these things can happen no matter what you do in any setting, whether you hire a contractor to fix something on your house. These are the same kinds of things that can happen when you self-publish. In the publishing action guide, I've outlined all the steps required for both pathways. I've also included an additional step or an additional path that can lead to the traditional contract. Be sure to refer to your publishing action guide for more details and also keep listening. I have a live module that I've done where I'm actually talking and recording myself and advice, anecdotal advice that I think you can use and help you make the right decisions and have a great time. I'll do these in all four of the modules, a live session. So enjoy and get ready for success. Hi everyone, 
I am going to be doing some of these modules live just as a supplement to all of the different modules, four to be exact. And I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about a personal story that kind of drives home the point of what you're learning in your modules. One of the first things as you are gaining clarity is that for me, when I first started out at uh, around 20, 22, 23 years old, and I had won the writing contest, and that's one of the unconventional ways to get a publishing contract or a publishing deal or a book deal that I've talked about. One of the ways for me was to win a contest. So when I entered it, you know, I was just kind of doing it, and I had no in real intentions of making this a long-term goal or a long-term career pursuit. And so I didn't plan for it. Um, not knowing that that is the writing is something that I wanted to do for a really, really long time. And so as you get ready to plan and you're gaining clarity and you're understanding more about what it is you'd like to do and also how many books you'd like to write, I never thought I could write beyond four books. And at the time of this taping for this video, I'm already at eight books and I actually have about nine more that I've already started and they are either 100 pages, 45 pages, some are 30 pages. So nine additional books that are in various stages and I never thought that that would happen. So that's one thing is just to really think long term. Could you do this long term? You never know how many ideas you're going to get. When I finish one idea, another one would come and then I got a story for this other idea and they just start coming when you really open your mind and are receptive to them. So that's the first thing about getting in clarity. The second thing is that I didn't tell anyone that I entered the contest. You're going to hear in a lot of interviews, um, if you listen to them on my blog or just on YouTube and other places that I've been over the course of all these years writing and teaching and speaking about writing and speaking about disability, you are going to have a platform. And so you first, I didn't tell anyone that I was entering a contest. It was just my little secret. I really didn't really think about the why, but as I went on, I knew the reasons why I didn't tell anyone. And that was, I didn't want any naysayers. I wanted just this to be something that I would pursue on my own, that I would try and I would see how it goes. And if it didn't work out, nobody knew. Just me and God, of course, but no one would knew if I failed or if I was successful. And when I was successful, winning the contest and getting a trip to New York, and an advance and $500 uh, advanced for the contract and also publishing the book was part of the winning the contest. It was great. It was like, wow, you entered a contest and you won. So, you know, there would always be that, those little voices. You already have, you know, deprecating voices in your head. You already have naysayers that kind of sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear. So when you're working on something, why invite some of those things, some of those added things by telling people what you're doing? So I just encourage you to really think about, you know, do I want to do this? And people would say, you know, well, what about an accountability partner? Well, accountability partner is just one person. You can get one person to motivate you and to check in and to see how you're doing. But you can also ask that trusted friend or that person who's an accountability partner to not, you know, share what you're doing any further. Whatever your goal is, just say, look, this is what I want to do. I want to check in. Um, I'm expecting that you'll know, keep my my business and what I'm doing, what I'm pursuing in confidence. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And then the last thing that um, writing has helped, I mentioned the platform. Um, I never really knew much about my platform or that I would even have a platform. My platform has become, you know, overcoming adversity, obviously the writing, writing about disability also, and also writing about romance. But uh, there are things that I've done where I've spoken and I've helped change policy and different laws and things regionally in my area for people with disabilities and writing all of that came about as a as a way from writing and so that's what I want to share is that you know really think about long term most people that most people will tell you most authors that have written 40 and 50 books some of them probably never set out to write that many. They just wanted to write one and then they would see where it goes and see how successful they are. It's like, oh, I'm just kind of dipping my toe. 
right now in the water and seeing if the water is calm and if I can wade into it a little bit more. It is so important, you know, to think long term, to think about what you what this would look like in the future. I love being a local celebrity in the next few years as I produce more and more books because people will begin to look at back at my catalog and say, wow, you've written more than one. People enter your career at different stages. So somebody's with you when you write book one and they gobble that up and that's great. And then somebody's with you when you write book 10 and then they discover that you have all this other product and all these other things that you're doing. So think about it, pray about what you're gonna be doing, how long this will last and never think that it's just gonna be one thing because when you think about it long term and you try to make plans for it, now I'm making plans for a long term career when I didn't know initially at 23 that that's that this would be, I would still be around this long for one and that I would still be have an interest and have actual things that I could produce and try to make my own. So enjoy this gaining clarity. I hope you are gaining clarity. I hope you are ready for the second part of visioning. Keep going and keep listening to these ideas. There'll be a total of four videos. This is the first one to go with module one, Gaining Clarity. And let me know if you have questions or if you have feedback. And I enjoy uh, talking with you live for this little bit when the rest of the series is recorded. Um, so I hope that this has been a benefit to you. And if not, let me know how it can be better, how things in the content can better serve you. I'll see you next time in module two, where you'll start visioning a great career in writing and speaking or whatever. Bye.